to steal a, like a camelback. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, how, how often did you wash yours? Pretty uh, pretty regularly. Like once a week, I think. Yeah. So you definitely saw like the dead skin cell build up around yeah. the around the lip. Yeah. yeah. And it, it just boggles my mind that somebody would be like, "Let me drink out of that. Let yeah. me take it and drink you know? out of somebody's shit." Yeah, it's a little strange. I, I get it, man. People be be waterfalling Gatorade from their homies that they've known their whole life, but be eating ass out of a girl that they just met at the club 30 minutes ago type of shit. Yeah, that's a little strange. The world is a strange place. Absolutely. It's falling apart, too, at the seams. That's Man, I am. Well, you know, we'll get into that. Yeah, for sure. Because uh, I, I, I'm kind of digging it. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're kind of digging the I'm pandemic? Digging it. Okay, fair I'm enough. Digging it. But uh, 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 this pre-roll stuff is getting a bit out of hand here. It wasn't too bad. We've had worse. We, we've had longer pre-rolls. We've had, I think, pre-rolls that went on for like 15 minutes, huh? Um, yeah, I think um, at the most, there's probably like 13 minutes or something like that, I'd imagine. I was watching, um, oh, fuck, I can't remember the damn YouTuber's name. That's what happens when you follow too many YouTubers, right? Correct. But um, they were like doing a tutorial on something, and they were fucking around. And he's like, hey, man, this will make pretty good B-roll, right? And they're like fucking around like inside his apartment. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's essentially the same with this. Yeah. This is just... I think it was a music video, actually, before like the song started. He's like, hey, dude, this would make pretty good pre-roll, don't you think? <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. Uh, that's, well, that's kind of our deal, you know? It evolved, and it was also just uh, – it used to, it started as a way for me to just kind of uh, – well, outside of the sound check, but also to get you guys to shut up after a while so I could do my intro. But yeah, yeah, yeah. now that we have the automated intro, I can kind of insert it anywhere I want, kind of like this. Are you ready? Yeah. What is going on, guys? What? Oh my God! What is going on, guys? That was all one word. <laughs> Welcome to the Second City Kids podcast, episode number one hundred and fifty-two. One five two. Oh yeah, we are back. Uh, we took last week off because I was sleeping all day. We're gonna get into that in a little bit, I'm sure. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, man, we are back. And before we get too started into like our normal agenda, uh, from the last time me and Gabe talked, the world has changed very dramatically. Yeah, I love it, man. Yeah. So um. And, and, you know, we'll get into the music section later, but... Yeah. Um, zombie apocalypse, I guess? Yeah, I guess. So, um, you know, me how me and Gabe tend to stay away from, like, the real-life stuff, uh, just due to the fact that I feel like people get enough of it. Through the get, news. Yeah, through the news, Twitter, Facebook, you know. Joe Rogan. Yeah, stuff like that. I think if you get that from anywhere else, so... Uh, outside of this opening intro thing, I mean, my, minus a few topics that we got, um, you know, we're going to try to stay away from the coronavirus. Issue. Wash your hands, wash your asses. Absolutely. Real good. Uh, I would, the last thing I'll say about it uh, moving forward is that um, I just think uh, all of this is being blown out of proportion. Now, I'm not saying that it's not a serious deal because 100% it is. You know, mm-hmm. anytime a virus moves that as quickly as this one does, it's definitely a problem, right? However, it has a very high mortality rate. Uh, most people are fine. Um, I just feel like the media is doing too much. Um, to if only we could talk about global warming as much as they hype this up, right? Correct. Yeah. Correct. Here's the thing. You and I, um, we're young, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. and our lungs are coated in sweet black tar because we're smokers. <laughs> no, we're not smokers no, we're anymore. Not. Yeah. But um, the, the thing is that. If you or I catch it, we'll probably bounce back. Yeah. But it's people like your daughter and mm-hmm. my parents that we need to worry about. Correct. And so that's why the world's freaking out at the moment. Yeah. Um, I just think it's hilarious because all like these boomers are stocking up on TP and hand sanity. And meanwhile, like our gen's like, yeah, let's go to Greece. Yeah, right. Let's book a $50 flight to fucking Mexico or something. Uh, somebody told me on Friday that they booked a flight to Minneapolis for $50. Really? $50. I don't know what the fuck you're going to do in Minneapolis, but it's $50. My uh, my friend from work, she booked a... Sh- what is it? Where is she flying to? Orlando for 50 bucks, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, t- I told Nikki we should have waited uh, <laughs> yeah, We should have right. waited like a week or two for the Vegas tickets, but they're yeah. done and paid for. It is what it is. But um, So, yeah, I mean, I, like I said, we try to stay stray away from these things just due to the fact that, A, it's outside of our pay grade, and B, it's not what we do this for. Also, how masterful of a premonition pre-snipe did I do for canceling my Japan trip? <laughs> Yeah, because <laughs> because I canceled it before this whole thing like was, you know, blown oh, yeah. up in like a pandemic. I was like, oh, I don't know about all this. Yeah, sounds a little weird, right? 
But yeah, so other than that, like I said, we have a couple of topics covering like Lucy things associated with the, the you know the coronavirus, but we're not going to talk about it because it's not our deal outside of our pay grade. So let's go ahead and get it moving. So um, Disney Plus has a TV show called Imagineering. Have you heard anything about this? Nope. Alrighty. So essentially, what this is is actually quite interesting. If you especially if you're like a hardcore Disney person, is that it takes Disney throughout its history and talks about the theme parks exclusively. All right. And talks about like how Disney sets itself apart and tries its best to make the best experience possible for the people who go to the park, right? So it started off with Disneyland when he opened it over there. It was actually a nightmare. That first opening day at Disney was like horrible. Like it was got off. They had cement still drying and stuff like that. Like it was a real deal problem. Damn, that's metal as fuck. Yeah. This it, ride's called Don't Get Stuck in the Cement. Correct. <laughs> yeah, correct. <laughs> uh, and it takes it all the way to today, you know, where they have opened up galaxy's edge and stuff like that. So it's like six, seven episodes, uh, and about an hour a piece. And it's all very interesting. Uh, it's very interesting to learn the history of kind of like the thought process behind the creative of, um, Disney, as far as the parks go. Cause I think the finances are kind of well known, but that's when we're talking about the creative aspect of it. I think it's kind of an interesting look. Cause these Imagineers is what they're called are responsible, uh, to give that uniqueness. Di- yeah. That Disney magic, magical experience to people. Uh, and they were interviewing people who were around during the reign of Walt when Walt was still around. Um, that's crazy to think that people from that era are still out yeah. and about, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. How, how old were they in the, in the interview? Like 80, 90? Probably. But most like, Close. yeah, like 80s, 70s yeah. to 90s yeah. probably. Correct. Yeah, definitely. Especially with those more creative people. Um, they were, they spoke very highly of him and some of them even talking about his passing today. Are still very visibly affected by him passing. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, um, because especially when it comes to the creative aspect of Disney and how it works, Walt was always hands on with everything. He wanted to see what everybody was working on. He wanted to have an opinion on everything. And he, one of the guys said he's like, when he died, we kind of lost that direction. Like we kind of lost that guy who was kind of leading the charge into the next generation or into the next you know, latest and greatest idea. You know. Uh, so he was very upset by that. Also kind of talking about the, um, the balance between um, the creative guy who was Walt and the financial guy who was Roy, his brother, and how sometimes Roy had to <laughs> reel him in a little bit, reel Walt in, because if you let Walt to his own devices, he would spend all the money and they would never draw a profit because that's the type of guy that Walt was. And that's kind of a... Uh, that's how partnerships work, man. Yeah. You have the uh, the... The dreamer, as I like to call them, and then you have the, uh, the Earth Walker. Yeah, that brings you back down. That's why. I, which one are you? Are you big picture guy or are you detail oriented? I'm, I'm a big picture guy. Yeah, yeah, I am too, man. That's why this podcast sucks. No. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, but uh, so yeah, and that's not kind of something with the two people in charge. It's something that they followed up until recently, where they had the like you said, the dreamer and the realist, and um, it's kind of interesting. And like I said, they cover everything, man. They cover even their failings, man. You'd be shocked. Um, they were very honest about themselves when some of their bad decisions that they've made and they were, man, you know, they didn't try to make any excuses for it. It's good to be honest and self-reflect. Absolutely. And they're like, well, maybe it wasn't such a great idea, but we'll do what we can to fix it and stuff like that. Talk about Paris, talk about Shanghai, all that kind of stuff. So like I said, if you were kind of the hardcore Disney fan, if you're really interested in like the creative aspect of this, I would definitely recommend this show. I checked it out. It was a joy, uh, and some really beautiful moments with some of the people and when they talk about what was going on during those time periods is very interesting stuff so definitely check it out quick little segue you mentioned to me about a week or two ago when i told you to watch um Super Size me too you're like what are your five favorite documentaries and mm-hmm. i was like well i'd have to probably think about it i think maybe we should put that as a podcast game for next week's uh okay. agenda because sure. I, I i think i have a pretty good roundup i i really thought about that you like said it and i was like what are my five favorites mm, okay and so i think i don't know do you have viewers kind of yeah i know yeah. The, the, i know the top three for sure Sure. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll get back to, with that next week because I, I've yeah I've got like my top three four. Mm-hmm. It's just now I got to recount what else I've seen and what else has fucked me up real good. Yeah, correct, correct. Uh, did you finish Super Size Me too? By the way, no, I couldn't. I t- told you, man, I could not get through it. So it's it's properly good. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that real quick. So yeah, it's the guy who did the first Super Size Me, the Morgan guy, Spurlock. Yeah, God, that handlebar mustache. Yeah, that uh, the dude obviously who ate McDonald's for thirty days and his whole entire like health was completely affected by the whole entire situation. Uh, he did another documentary with him starting up a fast food restaurant a chicken, of his own, right? Yeah, a chicken sandwich shop. And uh, he was kind of talking about how difficult it kind of was to get into it. I, again, I only watched like a certain bit of it because once they started poking the, chi- the little chicks with the hypodermic needle, that's when I checked out because <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't want to know how the sausage is made. 
literally and figuratively in that regard. So um, I, I think what really kind of captivated me is that this was spun. At, if you don't know anything about it, this was spun as one thing, but it turned into a completely different thing. Mm-hmm. It was essentially Morgan saying, well, I'm going to start my own fast food restaurant. It's going to be healthier, the healthier option, right? Yeah. And then that falls apart very quickly and it turns into, and you know, call me crazy if you haven't seen it, but it turns into the fight against big chicken. Mm-hmm. It's really what that's about because all this chicken industry stuff is wild. Mm-hmm. It's all over the place. I think Tyson owns like 98% of the, like the chicken like um what do they call them coos Mm -hmm. or their parent company does and Mm -hmm. like the chicken distributors blah 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 this and that and it is terrifying man. not as easy as it seemed no it's not because like halfway through it totally switches gears on you and Hmm. you know i'd say like right about when they're vaccinating morgan's chicks um that's when things start to kind of take a take a spiral downward take a turn interesting yeah, man. Um, so I would definitely recommend it because I actually watched Super Size Me before. Because I like, did too. I yeah, just, they put it on YouTube. I'm like, I just have to because it's just such a it's such a well done documentary, like in every way, and uh, extremely fascinating. And um, it's like a staple of American culture. If you grew up, if you were born between ninety and like ninety nine, you probably saw this in health class and junior high or high school Absolutely. at one point. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, I saw there was there was a second one, and I was like, "Oh fuck, yeah, we gotta watch it now." And it's funny because uh, every time I watch Super Size Me, and I know this is the exact opposite. You start of, craving it, yeah. There's the exact opposite of their intention. I start, to, I'm like, I want McDonald's now. Fuck, right? I've actually gotten up from my couch and walked to the McDonald's down the street from my house so I can get it. You I know, get- granted, um, in moderation, right? Yeah, sure. In moderate, like cocaine's good for you in moderation. Absolutely. But, uh, <laughs> black tar heroin's good for you for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> Eating uh, the boom shields off of microphones. It's good for you. Moder- <laughs> Except crystal meth. Not even once. In moderation. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, um, great documenter, director, actor, writer, yeah. producer. Because mm-hmm. he, he was kind of, uh, I don't want to say a one-man band, but he did a lot for a lot. both. Yeah. Both for, for those who don't know a whole lot about Morgan, outside of those two documentaries in which he's well known for, he also had a TV show running for a little bit where he would try different like lifestyles or different kind of experiences for 30 days and kind of see how it measures up. Uh, he worked in Detroit as like a temp worker, like working below minimum wage and see if he can live in Detroit and he could not do it. Like he's like, it's impossible. He's like, I worked, I went to that work every day. He's like, I could barely afford to live in the horrible neighborhoods. He's like, it's bad. That was just an example. Uh, I know they did a couple, him and his girlfriend or whatever did a couple, but um, that's an, again, he's a very interesting guy. Uh, so I would definitely check out a lot of his work cause it's called good stuff. Speaking about lifestyle changes, uh, you might want to put away your Tom Ford suits and your 22s because no time to die has been pushed back. How ironic because yeah. this is the time to die. Yeah. Um, November. I think they said like Thanksgiving. Yeah. Probably. I'm going to say like a week before. I didn't look at the exact date. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a really good quote by a video game developer whose name eludes me. And he said that a rushed game will never be good, but a delayed game will eventually be good. Um, That's not why I was pushed back. Why was it pushed back? It was pushed back because of the fucking coronavirus. Oh, was it? <laughs> yeah. Man, it was pushed care. back because they thought it was going to impact sales sales mm. which is the same reason why they pushed back mulan mulan got pushed back there's like three three or four of these movies that got pushed back because of that yeah i was in a uh, lockport the other day and the foxy theater down there is uh closed to like april yeah crazy man yeah man fucking baseball season don't get me started game <laughs> everything season hockey baseball yeah. okay I'm, I'm upset but anyway yeah so that that's why it's got pushed back uh, because they were afraid it was going to affect the bottom line which i understand however i'm still bummed about it <laughs> you know um, cause it looks good and i you know, Lord knows what's going on with the, with the world and how it's working right now. But yeah, so that's what's happening. Uh, no time to die has been pushed back to November due to the coronavirus scare and whatnot. Next up, let's talk about Artemis Fowl. Have you seen the trailer for this? No, but I've read most of the books. That was like one of my favorite series. Yeah. So they got a movie coming out, um, produced by Disney naturally. Who's uh, playing Artemis? Oh, uh, it's just, I, I don't know the kid offhand. I, I don't, he's not like a big name or anything gotcha. like that. Um, most of the time when it comes to those style of like book adaptations, they try to stay away from like the well-known people. I feel like, like nobody was going to cast Daniel Radcliffe in anything before he became Harry Potter. Right. Sure. So, uh, same kind of deal, I think. Um, but yeah, so it looked interesting. Uh, I read, uh, like a little bit of the book, so I'm vaguely familiar with the whole thing. Um, uh, but yeah, it looked good. I know some people are freaking out because it's not loyal to the book, but that happens with every single adaptation, yeah. my friend. It happens that to every word. Happens to every single book adaptation that exists. The only time I've ever seen it come close 
was uh, looking for Alaska as far as like adaptation to what it, it actually became. One of my favorite things in Artemis Fowl, like the lore, is that um, I, I believe it's in the first book. They explain that they have like the fairies and all the magical creatures wiretapping humans' phones, mm-hmm. and whenever the word fairy is brought up, they like pay closer attention to it. But like nine out of ten times, it's just them talking about like the latest MMORPG that they're playing. Yeah, correct. Yes, I, I just thought that was fucking hilarious. Yeah. I don't know, it's a weird <laughs> tidbit from fifteen years ago, Gabe. That you that you still got it sticks out of your mind. Yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense though. It was like properly grounded in. Like it was that re- universe, you like know it, what I mean? Yeah, and it was like reality because that would totally mm. be something like an agency would do. But yeah, it's like if the, <laughs> if fairies were real, the FBI would be listening. Right? Correct. Yeah. If you mention the word fairy and you're not referring to RuneScape or something, right? <laughs> yeah. Correct. It's like about oh, yeah. That's uh, I thought yeah, that that is pretty funny. But yeah, Artemis Fowl is coming out. Should be good. Next up, let's talk about Christian Bale in Thor. Apparently, he's being cast into some kind of role in the new Thor movie. Uh, which is Thunder. Was it Love and Thunder or something like that? Is I what, love it. Was what it's called. It's so fucking eighties. I love it. Uh, but yeah, Bale's getting uh, getting a role. We don't know what yet. Um, villain, villain. We'll see. Uh, we'll definitely see. Because um, I definitely, I think it's time to see him in kind of in that role. Though, if you saw him in the Fighter, he was kind of a dick in that movie. You ever see the Fighter? Uh, no, it's on my list actually. Yeah, you should check that out because he was kind of <laughs> half the movie wanted to kill him, and the other half you felt bad for him. So he was a bit of a loose cannon in uh, Ford versus Ferrari as well. Yeah, was he? Cool. Cool, cool, cool. But yeah, Bale and Thor, uh, he's making that 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 crazy crossover, man. Well, we might have to thumb through the uh, like the Thor lore, Thor lore, Thor lore, Thor lore. Say that five times. Thor lore, Thor lore, Thor lore. Um, yeah. and and, and kind of maybe make some predictions on that because yeah. if we don't have a uh, exact casting character name, hmm. Hmm. yeah, I'm going for villain, man. I think he'd make a fucking great villain. But yeah, what arguably one of the greatest Batman's, mm-hmm. and now I'm hoping one of the greatest Thor villains. Yeah, man. Uh, because what what who's Thor had? Thor hasn't. Well, he has Loki, obviously. Tom Hiddleston, he's doing right, but that's like an anti-hero kind of thing. Yeah, for sure. And then the second one was the evil elf that nobody gave a fuck about. And the third one, who was the villain in the third one? It was uh, there was two villains. There was the initial Titan-looking dude. When I say Titan, very loosely. Oh, okay. And And then it was uh, the sister. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hell, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm, Excellent. She was pretty good. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he could do he could do for a super charismatic villain. I think he's due for that. Outside of Tom Hiddleston, but like you said, he's kind of that middle ground uh, kind of a character, anti anti hero, sympathetic kind of a character. But yeah, so uh, well, I guess we we'll have to wait and see. Like you said, maybe you and I will have to dig through a little bit of cor- Thor lore, Thor lore, core, the core Thor lore, the core Thor lore, and see uh, who would be a good fit. Maybe and, yeah. So uh, core Thor lore is a new genre. It's basically gent, but <laughs> <laughs> but with hammers, <laughs> but with hammers. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, so yeah, so that's a, that's kind of cool. So let's go ahead and move it along to gaming. So the PlayStation Two turns twenty. Um, not. This past week, but the week, the week prior. prior. Yeah. So 20 in two weeks. Happy birthday, baby girl, to the best DVD player on the face of this fucking planet. <laughs> I don't care what anyone says. Best DVD player. Best console probably ever. Definitely up there. Yeah. I think it still holds the record for the largest um, game library, like not including the PC, obviously, right? It's, it's also the highest selling of all time. Mm-hmm. Um, crazy, you know, crazy. Which, you know, there's a list full of accolades that the PlayStation 2 has. Um, that, and, uh, what was that? The sixth gen, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that sixth gen console war thing was very interesting because i was watching if you had an xbox the og xbox you had to get an adapter to play dvds Mm -hmm. and i read the i know but it's a very interesting reasoning and a very interesting workaround and maybe we'll talk about that one day but i don't know the sixth gen and going into the seventh gen man and it might just be our bias but that was like golden years dude i'd agree um i think uh, well, everybody talks about the PlayStation 2. It definitely dominated that that without a doubt. Yeah, that that generation, no doubt. Um, but you know, I think people sleep on the GameCube a lot. I think the GameCube doesn't get enough love when it comes to like. Kind I of don't think impact. Nintendo started getting proper recognition until the Switch, honestly. And well, recently, be- between the 64 and the Switch, there was like those like, why would you get a Nintendo unless you want to play Mario games? Mm-hmm. You know, it's like it's underpowered, blah blah blah. That yeah. whole thing. Yeah, correct. Yeah, man. Um, you know, and I, you know, I wasn't crazy about the Xbox, but you know, it paved the way to what it would become. And then the 360 came out, and that it just fucking smacked everybody around. That ooh, that generation. Uh, I just punched my boom shield. That's like six episodes in a row that you or I have punched. Right. Boom we just don't like boom shields on this podcast. I, I, well, we need it. We need them, Gabe. Yeah, especially me. Yeah, for sure. Sometimes uh, <laughs> when we're when we're playing games, and this is appropriate because we're in the gaming section, yeah. I'll take off the boom shield on my mic because sometimes we'll use the mic that I use for the podcast. Yeah, and I'll just turn the the gain all the way up on my mixer, You're and I'll just yell dumb shit into the mic when it's all quiet. <laughs> You're such a dick. 
Have you watched that video that I that I sent you guys last sent you last night? Which one? And the the chat where I, I didn't like, get a video. You when get, you were like, I can't be laughing this hard. Yeah, I didn't get a video. No. Really? Damn. You're gonna have to show me after the podcast because it was fucking stupid. Uh, but all right, yeah. So the PlayStation Two turns twenty. One more year, and it'll be legal to drink. Think about that. Great, the greatest console of all time. I, I stand by that. My my buddy, um, he he's our age, but he told his dad. His dad is about sixty five, and um, he told his dad the PlayStation Two turned twenty, and his dad was like, "What?" the <laughs> fuck because he was like you know a father at that time and he was 45 and he bought them the playstation he's like oh my word that's you know wild I mean? isn't it because our frame of reference is totally different from somebody like your dad's frame of reference yeah. or your mom's who might have bought you the playstation 2 yeah tell your mom let's see what she says yeah i'm be like to... mom what do you think about this the playstation 2 turned 20 that's pretty this wild month what do you think about that because you bought ours that's that's nuts man yeah man i, I stopped sharing consoles at the n64 though Everybody fell. Everybody else fell off, and it was just me, sure. me at the house. Sure, sure, sure. Outside of these random games here and there, but yeah, man, um, it's fantastic. I, I'm happy for it. Um, didn't think I would ever, because it's like it seems like 20 years seems such like like such a long time. But I swear to God, I was just opening up my. What was your favorite part of the the PlayStation Two? What was my favorite part? Yeah, feature, uh, software thing, just overall. Oh man, um, I have mine at the ready. Well, go ahead. Um, my favorite thing about the PlayStation 2 was that if you stood the console up, the little PlayStation logo would rotate. You could literally twist the little PlayStation, oh. like the, the enamel <laughs> thing. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. You could twist it so it's upright in either position. I, for whatever reason, I thought like it was like a mental trick that you were trying to explain to me. I'm like, what? Wait, 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 whoa. What? Yeah, if, if you turn the PS2 on its side, you the image rotate. you get through your TV will also be on its side. No, what uh, the fuck, dude? That's <laughs> what I'm saying. I was all confused. No, the little like the little like enamel like emblem looking mm-hmm. thing. You could that rotates. Oh, I don't cool. know if you knew that. Yeah, I did know that. Okay, cool. That makes sense. All right. Uh, no, actually, I will tell you one of the coolest things that I have did with the PlayStation 2. So if you played Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater, mm-hmm. there was a f- boss fight with the end. The, his name of the character was the and end. And you fast forward your calendar. And you fast forward your timer or your calendar and then, oh, shit. And then the dude dies. You don't even have to fight him. The dude's just dead. You just yep. find him. Lots of, well, that's more of a Kojima thing, I guess. But yeah, yeah. absolutely so brutally cool. PlayStation 1 and 2, do you remember going through your memory card? Like how cool that was? Yeah. yeah. You get to see like the little icons. You'd be like, mm-hmm. yeah. And then they're, they're like little, dancing around. Yeah, the little Stormtrooper helmet. You're like, yeah. Definitely. That was, that was cool as fuck. Eight megabytes was the was the size of these fucking Crazy. memory cards. And that one, oh my God. I, I Well, eight megabytes was the max. That yeah. was the expensive like $80 one. Yeah. Because my, the Xbox had memory cards as well, which plugged into the controller mm-hmm. coolly enough. Yeah. Um, And those are like, kilobytes i want to say mm-hmm. that was like a 512 kilobyte thing games were so small back then and i every time you turn you know, I, I had this talk with a coworker of mine because we were talking about Warzone, mm-hmm. and we're like this game is 200 gigs at this point and do you remember when you had to fit everything on like a five gig dvd yeah back, back in that gen yeah and then that's wild absolutely but speaking about playstation um the last of us which is uh currently irl we we're living in a simulation <laughs> of the last <laughs> of us uh has been picked up by hbo okay and the original writer is on board. Neil Druckmann, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm bad with names. Yeah, he's very excited. Uh, he's been talking about it on Twitter like nonstop. Um, yeah, and I, he's, I'm 110% on board. Yeah. And somebody, I think it might have been you actually, uh, that mentioned that the next wave isn't going to be comic book movies. It's going to be good video game adaptation movies. Yeah, correct. Uh, I just think it's interesting. Um, it's wild. It's a wild thing, man. Can we get Hugh Jackman as Joel? I, but that people, okay, but here's the deal. My, this Here's my, my caveat to the whole thing. Uh-huh. I don't want it to be about Joe and Ellie. Oh, you want it something else? Yeah, I, I think they could tell. What about a Joel backstory, stuff like that. Maybe because you could uh, honestly, you can cover what happened in those twenty years gap between when it, Joel's daughter died. Spoiler alert! And to when the the dude the, the game kicks off. That far yet? What? Happened? <laughs> I haven't gotten that far yet. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, no, I mean you do raise an interesting point because the target audience is the fans of the games, right? But mm-hmm. do you want to relive the same fucking story you did in the game? Yeah. That was thirty to forty hours as opposed to two and a half on screen. Mm-hmm. Obviously, no. Yeah. And then what do you do? Where do you go? But I mean, you know, that, that, that's the well, what's the, the catch twenty two here? Well, I think it's uh, they could. Uh, that's I think that's kind of the thing. I think if they kind of just rehash what the game already did, well, we already saw it done better. You know what I mean? And I think uh, if you kind of stray away from what the game did, I think you avoid some of those complaints about well, it's not as good as the game. <laughs> I think if you tell a unique story, I think there's something interesting there. I think you could show because obviously, like I said, in between from when Joel's daughter died to the beginning of the of the game, uh, obviously Joel did some fucked up shit in the meantime, just based on some of the clues that he, you know, that he said. 
about some of the things that he did along his way about being survivors and how that was the most important thing was surviving. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I would be interested in that. Um, or maybe something that's going on between now and the beginning of the new game. Um, I think you could kind of timeline to cover. Yeah. We have a lot of stuff that we could talk about. Uh, cause when me, when me and Nikki, when we finished the last of us, um, uh, him and I finished the last of us. We talked about it like, wow, I don't think I want a sequel. Him and I both discussed this. We didn't, we didn't want one. And if we did, I don't want it to be Joel and Ellie's story because I felt like it was wrapped up so beautifully. Um, but unless if there's a good reason, which is, I think that they do have a good reason in this new game. Um, so I think that there's a lot more world to explore outside of just Joel and Ellie. And I'll be totally interested in that moving forward. Good shit. Looking forward to that. Absolutely. Speaking of things you should be looking forward to. E3 was canceled. Yeah. Um, okay. Do you, I have a little? I, I gotta like get this off my chest. Go ahead. So I know where you're going, but go ahead. Yeah. Um. Well, I've I've mentioned this to everybody who said E3 was canceled. Literally nobody gave a shit about E3 until it was canceled. Because how much press coverage have you seen? How much hype have you seen? And then suddenly, boom, E3 is canceled, and everybody's like, "Oh no, that's like a like a gaming like testament. It's a landmark. Blah blah blah." Mm-hmm. It's like, I'm sorry. Were you going? Were you? Did you have any interest? No, Sony wasn't even planning on fucking going. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And it's this, it's the mentality of um, we don't realize what we have until it's gone. Mm-hmm. And I hate it. I hate it so much. Yeah. And I, I'm hoping that because it's canceled this year, people will give a shit about it next year. We'll flock out to it and go see it. Or it might die. It's totally possible. It yeah. might just call it quits. Say we had a good 20... Yeah. Five, maybe probably yeah close to maybe a little bit above maybe a little below yeah um that's my gripe dude because all my friends were like dude e3's canceled it sucks it's like i'm sorry did you even plan on watching any of the streams or what were you looking forward to this year where where is it how yeah. about that one that's the easiest one correct yeah you know you're right about that for sure um and i kind of i i agree with your sentence your sentiments mostly um it is kind of a wild thing uh, uh it's just it's interesting how these like um you know, these developers are going to kind of pimp themselves out or get themselves excited about the products projects moving forward without it because like a, like a, like an e, like an EA or like Ubisoft and stuff like that like what are they going to do That's I'll tell what. you this the only way to bring E3 back to its former glory is if the big 3 have like an agreement that says we'll we'll release small stuff but the big boys get saved for our own get personal. saved for E3 yeah. oh, because okay. Like I said, Nintendo Direct, you don't even need to leave your house. You just got to wake up at 5 in the morning because mm-hmm. it's Japan time, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the, whatever Sony's thing is called. Uh, uh, state of play. State of play and then Microsoft's... Whatever the fuck. <laughs> yeah, whatever, right? Yeah. But like, there really is no need for E3 at the moment. Mm-hmm. It's just a congregation of people that enjoy gaming, which you can get at any fighting game tournament, but with slightly more toxicity right <laughs> slightly, um, slightly. that's just dude that's just my thought process on it because like i said the world is freaking out right now but you didn't give a shit two weeks ago correct you really didn't yeah uh, i think it opens up the door though because i think people are starting to ask questions about evo like what's gonna happen with evo this year uh you know everything is still going to evo yeah yeah uh but every, <laughs> but everybody's kind of you know every, everything's kind of at a standstill as far as like entertainment and people are talking about, oh, yeah, oh, yay, we're off school, off work. It's like, yeah, but you got nothing to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, this is the perfect time to catch up on games. Yeah, no, you're right. On you're, movies. You're definitely right about that. Um, but, yeah, so we'll see. Um, see what happens moving forward with E3. I mean, I'm, I think they could easily push it back. Like, who says? Because what is it? It's normally in July, right? So Yeah, push it back to I, I just think like it was August, September. I just think it's a little preemptive. I think that, I think everybody's just so, like, jumping. Concerned. Yeah, jumping the gun on this thing. That Everybody's trying to be PC with the coronavirus. How many emails did you get in your inbox about it? A lot. A shit ton. It's fucking ridiculous. A lot. Every... Even like GNC, because mm-hmm. I like get my protein there. They're like, our response to cr- motherfucker. Like, yeah. What are you What are you responding to? Yeah. I just need my protein and my <laughs> oats. Uh, at Bank of America, my bank. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah that too. I'm like, like, I haven't even stepped foot in your store ever. <laughs> like, I signed up on, for the thing online and yeah. I, I go through I've, the drive through Same thing. Yeah. I, have, I have one of those and never step foot inside. Yeah. Unbelievable. Where it's so strange. Anyway, I'm sorry. Uh, that's a tangent. But Let's talk spell break. So... Um, I mentioned to you about a week or two ago that it is cross-play between PS4 and PC. Mm-hmm. And you said, let me consult the Elder Gods. Yeah, and basically. You asked your wife. Yeah. You said, wife, may I spend $30 on Spellbreak. Uh, and wife said yes. Correct. What do you What do you think of it? So, uh, 
No, I've only got like a handful of hours in, and I will openly admit I am not any good at all at this game. Saw me play. I'm horrible at it. It's hard. Uh, but it's a very hard game to learn. All right. Now, for those who may not be in the know, uh, it is on closed beta right now. So that's why there's not like a ton of hype around it it's right like now. It's like beta two. Yeah. Um, so that's that's why um, it's basically a battle royale, help. But instead of guns, you're using magic. Right. So essentially, I think you and I talked about it initially, how you're like, it's kind of like Smite mixed in with a battle royale with a VR. Right. And for the most part, I agree. Now, obviously, it doesn't have like the build, quote unquote, aspect of it. But um, like the MOBA aspect at all. Yeah, correct. Um, but so far, I am enjoying myself. Um, there are. It took me like six games to get my first kill in it, though. Mm-hmm. Like it, it makes you work. There's definitely a lot to learn. Uh, every class ha- is viable and every class has its own uh, pros, cons, pros, cons, stuff like you, you might want to try next mm-hmm. round. Um and I mentioned to you that the big thing about this game is that it's like Siege. When you die, it is a learning experience mm-hmm. because it's never... Well, sometimes it's bullshit, right? Yeah. But most times, you're like, I could have done something in response yeah. to that. Correct. Um, so there's a lot to learn. Um, I'm having a lot of fun with it, though. Um, I find myself... Because sometimes when, you, when you're frustrated with the game, you're like, just you're like, fuck it. I can't take it. You shut it off, right? And you mm-hmm. move on. You play something else. For me, I'm like, ah, god damn it. All right, let's play again. You know what I mean? And I think that's an important thing when it comes to a game is that kind of replayability, the the want to learn. Because I found myself getting like really discouraged yesterday when I was playing. I'm like, what the fuck, man? Yep. Cause Especially with dudes that will snipe you from 200 feet in the air, and you're like, where? Yeah, he def- was a dot. Yeah, de- definitely. Uh, and it's just interesting. I like how these things, it's kind of like almost like a game of paper, scissors, rocks, how elements react differently with other elements some elements cast the other elements out and stuff like that and then your uh, your combination of spells and yeah 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 oh. i i actually had a cool moment um so it's the only cool moment i've had so far where i could like tip my cap on it but um i shot my ice out because i used the you know I'm, I'm a the ice guy so i shot my ice out and i had the, um, the stone on the other hand so i shot it out and the dude was hit i hit him a couple of times uh so the dude was low and then i just skid out from underneath it and i Ground, Dunk pound, him. ground pound ground mm-hmm. pounded on uh, when I was sliding and it was like the most satisfying thing. I'm like, yeah, that was. Did you feel like the moment in a uh, Space Jam? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm like, that was fucking cool. That was nice. So I, I enjoyed that moment. And if I can get start stacking these moments together, I think I could get really behind this. Yeah, well, um, you know, when you introduced me to Smite, there was that like month span where I would no idea how to build, <laughs> no idea how to play, and I would just go for the minions. I would just be like, "Well, no, the moment I approach a god, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get smited, <laughs> right?" Yeah. And then one day it just clicked. Yeah. And you just get it. Yeah. You get over that learning curve, and it's fun, man. It's a, it's very much a like a grown ups battle royale mm-hmm. because it takes some time, it takes some patience, and it takes creativity, honestly. Yeah. Uh, and I, it's it emphasizes the ability to hit your shots. Because you can't like be in the ballpark and <laughs> There's kill no people. aim assist. Yeah, the, you can't be in the ballpark and, and kill somebody. You know, you got to hit your shot, man. Um, so I think that's what I'm working on right now. I think uh, the aim is getting better. Uh, you know, I, I'm getting there. I'm, I'm starting to understand it. I'm starting to get it. I'm also understanding the importance of like runes and stuff. Like that's important. And spacing. Yeah, spacing. And the, the foot dance, man. It's yeah, the foot dance. Absolutely. You got to know your range too. You, you also have to know how quickly your projectiles travel. I think yep. that's that's huge because and how quickly some of them charge up. Yeah, even get it out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there, there's have... interesting elements to it, and it feels for essentially a magic fight mm-hmm. uh, br. It feels pretty grounded. Absolutely, and you could ad- you could adapt the style. You could adapt your own style of play. I think uh, when you have like a class based thing, and people think, well, you can only play this game a certain way. No, when you got magic mixing and you could have different gauntlets on different hands and learn how to combo these things together, you can kind of play how you want. You know what I mean? And I think that's kind of an interesting thing, um, the ability to kind of figure out where you where you sit. Yeah, because, I mean, ice is, like I said, that dash, high mobility, and then mm-hmm. stone's very, like, reactive, defensive. Yeah. So there you go, man. Timing, very timing-oriented. Uh, Maybe not so much aim, but timing for sure. Um, it's very interesting stuff, and I'm having a lot of fun. Uh, hopefully soon enough, you and I will be able to go on and get some crossplay going. Because Gabe says he's as bad as I am, so that's good. So we could be horrible together. Yeah, we we can dust off the uh, rust together. Absolutely. Uh, and try, trying to figure it out, you know. Uh, in the meantime, though, um, on a related conversation, Warzone came out. Ah, dude, I had a sick transition. You didn't let me do it. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I actually had two because you said rust, but go ahead. I was gonna say, speaking of grown up BRs and rust. Oh, Warzone. 
Oh, did you write that one down? No. Okay, good. <laughs> all right. So, yeah, let's talk about Warzone. All right. Uh, so, yeah, they dropped their their new fancy smanchy, um, you know, BR. All right. And uh, it's Call of Duty. So, it feels like Call of Duty. But the but, BR is nothing like any other BR you've played. Correct. Yeah, uh, absolutely. They, they have objectives, mm-hmm. like contracts and, you know, people you could target and kill. And the 1v1s when you die. And yeah, that's cool. And your teammates yeah. back. And, mm-hmm. Oh, Lord. Yeah, there's there's a, like an economic aspect of it. Like, you have to watch the economy of how much point, how many money you have. Or you just spend money on the airstrike or save it for the, the revive a friend if you could even make it. Um, yeah, man. So I played it a little bit last night. Once I got my fucking poop shoved in on spell break, I'm like, I need to get my confidence back up. So that's, <laughs> that's what I did. I, I plugged in call of duty cause we all know what we're getting. Right. And I played it and I enjoyed it. Uh, now the only complaint, and this is like my main complaint for most BRs is I hate the environment. It's so dull looking to me. Yeah. Uh, it's not very pretty, but whatever. I don't care. You know, as I'd long say most of the maps and in- that Call of Duty in general just aren't particularly pretty. Yeah, I agree with that. They're they're good. They're yeah. fun. They're not pretty. Yeah, they're not they're not a, pl- a pleasure to look at. But playing, they're fun. You know what I mean? So I guess that's what really matters at the end of the day, I suppose, right? Um, so playing a couple of rounds of it, and I I enjoyed myself for the most part. Uh, I ended up in the middle of an airfield with me and my me and my partner because the other one dipped out, uh-huh. and we were getting pinched. <laughs> <laughs> so like we were like fucking ducking our head back and forth on. The, in front of us was like a mountaintop. I'm like, all it takes is one good fucking sniper, and then we're right. we're screwed. And behind us was the hangar. So I'm like, if somebody's coming from, somebody's definitely coming from the hangar. Yeah, somebody's definitely coming. So uh, we it was like an, a very tense gunfight that was mm-hmm. happening um, because I would say time to kill is pretty quick. I mean, I know with the three shields and stuff like that, um, you could you, you could take a couple, but um, it got really intense, and I like that. That's the thing about BRs that is the most fun. Is that once you start to get to the end and it's you and your partners and your, your cheeks are clenched. Yeah. A handful of other people. You don't want to take that wrong step because that wrong step could equal death. Right. So, time to kill is the uh, is the next Daniel Craig Bond movie after they sent him another check. <laughs> but um, no, you're, you're totally right, man. It, it, it's um, and you mentioned this when you did your initial Modern Warfare review. The best things about this things are the elements that are not Call of Duty. Uh-huh. Um, and just as like a point of reference, um. I went from one to like 25 in like a single night. Mm -hmm. Um, And there was a point where I was just trying to level up the three, five, seven. Mm -hmm. And I was like, dude, this feels so familiar, but yet so distant. Cause Mm -hmm. I couldn't, it's hard, Mm -hmm. (laughs) especially with that gun. The timing is rough, dude. Yeah. And then I got the the snake shot and I was like, all right, now we're back in action. But but, you know, I felt like, I don't know. I felt like I, I know this thing. I've used it before, Yeah. but it's like, it's totally new. Correct. Yeah. My favorite part about that thing is that it deafens you. That's a cool little detail. <laughs> I don't know. I like that, but I'm having a blast with it, man. It's good to be kind of back in the action, and it is a very mature game as yeah. opposed to what it was. It's less arcadey, and mm-hmm. um, it's fun, dude. I'm Absolutely. Uh, so they did a pretty good job with it. I will definitely say uh, they should get credit for this, and I, it's it's so weird to me because I hate Infinity Ward with like a passion up to this point. But I really like this game. I think they're doing the good things with this game. I think, and the they, best part is that you don't need the battle pass. Yeah, right. It's yeah. totally optional. It's not like fun. you can be left in the dust like in Black Ops Four. Yeah, fun little cosmetic stuff. Uh, maybe the blueprints for weapons, but you you can make those weapons on your own. You don't need the blueprint. I actually got the uh, the XRX mm-hmm. blueprints for the M4 and for the mm-hmm. three five seven just yeah. by buying the game, and I was like, cool. Yeah, def- absolutely. So. Uh, so far, I mean, like I said, they're doing a pretty good job with the support of the game. The War Zone is very, very fun. I mean, we could hop on that soon if you want it as well. Yeah. Because crossplay. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I'm telling you, that's the future, man. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and granted, my aim will probably be a lot worse. Well, we'll see. No, it, it, it's going to be better. Because yeah. you got aim assist on console. Oh, true. This if is true. you've never used a mouse and keyboard, it is... It, <laughs> When you fuck up, you fuck up. Let me just leave it at that. <laughs> Especially with that three five seven, it's just oh my god, what am I doing? <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Oh, I will say, um, as a quick little tidbit, I had to decompress after that night of you know grinding. Mm-hmm. So me and Greg played. Um, we we were just like, dude, it's quick scope, right? And he three sixty no scoped me off the off the platform in rust, and I lost it, all my will to live that night. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? Time to go to bed. Time to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, man. Um, it's good stuff. So we'll definitely keep you guys updated on the Call of Duty front. And a look at this. We're talking events. about it in positive light. It's such a strange thing, right? <laughs> and it's, it's so properly good. Yeah, it is properly good, my friend. We have we've come such a long way from. I remember. 
or when like the podcast first started, I'm like, ah, fuck it. And Gabe's like, he's going to get it anyways. And I'm like, fuck you. And, and you did. And I always did. Yes. And you did, man. And you did. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Now we just need to get the zombies train back on track and we can. Sure, for sure. We can talk. So um, our podcast games were skipping this week because Mr. Jake was too busy, 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 busy playing uh, Spellbreak. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we do have a merch roundup mm-hmm. and we're going to do our top five documentaries next week. Absolutely. I think that'll be fun. Absolutely. Um. So since I mentioned the game, have you found pieces that you're like, oh yeah, I forgot about this, like the merch? Uh, I I because like I said, a lot of my old stuff is Adri- is now Adriana's. Mm-hmm. So there's stuff that she doesn't even wear anymore. I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot about this band of t-shirt. Yeah, <laughs> I was doing some digging. Yeah, but yeah, it's because it's I had one of those bands and I was like tallying and I was like, fuck, I have that much. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, damn, I didn't even think about that, you know? Because you're like, yeah, I like this band, but I don't like love this band. Mm-hmm. And then you see how many shirts you got, and you're like, shit, maybe. Maybe, Maybe I financially love them. <laughs> Maybe I do love them. It's been a while. But uh yeah. So that'd be that'd be kind of a fun little thing. Speaking to talk about. about going to Hot Topic and getting your favorite piece of merch, talk to me about it's a plan a seed tour. So uh this tour has subsequently been cancelled, but when I went, it was because right, we came as Romans as uh so what? <laughs> I don't know where the fuck I was going with okay, that. Okay, fair enough. Because they're sick, bro. Okay, so <laughs> good one. So uh, yeah, we went to we went uh, last week. Uh, they played at the House of Blues. Um, Nasty. We have mixed feelings about the House of Blues. Uh, we also kind of have mixed feelings about We Came as Romans for sure. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, that summed it up perfectly. Holy shit. Yeah, but uh, but Mike and the guys were there. Well, we'll, we'll talk. We'll talk. We'll talk about everybody. Right, go bottom up. Go we'll bottom talk. Up. We'll talk about everybody. So let's talk about Dayseeker because Dayseeker opened up this this whole joint, right? Still his fun life. Oh my god, dude! For he, Germaner, he is so good. He uh, is, what's his name? Rory. Rory. Yeah, Rory is a phenomenal live vocalist. They had a good set. They picked um, good songs that kind of blended well together from previous stuff to what they're doing now uh and yeah man they sound really really good you would think that there's more there's more than four of them because there's only four members in day seeker and they all do a lot of work and they all do a lot of work and uh backing vocals were phenomenal and the drumming was really good uh and rory just he, he he's second to none when it comes to that live performance uh and everything was really good i was really impressed with some of those notes that he can hit and you could tell probably about halfway through their set that they really started to gain like traction with the crowd they're like whoa especially when you would pull out some of those longer notes it was like whoa you know what i mean um he was really good they were really really good um yeah He's i'm glad i got to see, i got to see them again because it's been a while uh but next up was gideon now gideon smacks oh hold on oh <laughs> we have reservations hold on so i i saw gideon not too long ago actually with the divorce product when they played with norma jean and whatnot and, mm-hmm. I, and my opinions were basically summed up as it's fine um, but it's not something for me. This performance just drives that home to me. And I, this might get some winces from the Gideon fans of the world. It's hardcore limb biscuit. That's all it really, really is for me. Uh, to me, it's just all breakdown music. It's there's very little, uh, dynamic with their music. Honestly, it kind of reminds me of a less heavy, uh, uh, mirror from back in the day. Um, it's just the vibe that I get from them, um, and it's just all very bouncy, bouncy music. Which again, it's fun live, but will I ever sit down and listen to a CD of it? Nope, not nope, absolutely not. Will I probably enjoy a song here and there for sure? But again, I will not sit down and listen to a whole album of Getting because there's very little difference between <laughs> songs, and uh, I'm just not a fan of it. My wife liked it. She's like, oh yeah, I like them. I'm like, I don't. No <laughs> way, ratchet, huh? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I guess. Uh, I these, fu- these walls are kind of thin. I should. Yeah, bro. I was fucking pissed because I pulled up, picked up her phone the other day, and her most recent download was Gideon. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? She's like, what? I like them. I'm like, okay. but she doesn't like every time I die. Yeah, well, that's not where I get any edits of that. Okay. Uh, but so yeah, I'm not. I'm not really big on them. They they sound good and stuff, but it's just it's just it's just mosh music. It's music for the mosh heads. And granted, that's cool, but. I don't need to see them ever again because I think I've seen them every other time just by seeing them the last two times I've seen them. I I don't think you they're going to... see gonna, them by association. Yeah, I don't think they're growing very much in between now and then. I don't know. This is my opinion. Cool, man. Do you? Yeah. So, next up is the fucking Devil Wears Prada. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, this is like the, like the probably like 65% of the reason why I was going because every time they come through, I try to see them if I can. Sure. Right? And it's one of my... Devil Wears Prada is my wife's favorite band, so we got to go. Um... So they played, uh, and it was fucking sick. Let's, yeah. What would the set list look like? Oh, let me pull it up for you, actually, because I actually was just looking it up. Because is this 
the first time you've seen them play Chemical? Or no, was no, that no. The last tour, the last yeah. tour was the Chemical tour, yeah. right? Well, okay. yeah, I saw the I saw them play Chemical there, um, but. Uh, let me go ahead and get the set list pulled up for you guys because it was like a well-crafted set list. They had a little bit of, of everything for everybody, all right? A little bit from every era um, just to kind of get everybody moving, all right? So the set list was the following. Uh, Lines of Your Hands, which is a good, great opening song. Uh, Assistant to the Regional Manager, Worldwide, Chemical, Outnumbered. <laughs> no, he's finally busting that one out. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, the Thread, which is the live debut for it. Numb, which is also the, di- the live debut for Planet A. Born to Lose and Danger Wild Man. Wow, close yeah. not with Danger Wild Man. Absolutely. So they still do the uh, the darker tonage on that song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. They, Sweet. I, I gotta catch that. Yeah, they need to fix. Yeah, I'm glad. So glad they fixed. Go that. Go back and re-record it. Yeah, right. I'm we'll s- do a 10 year re-release. I'm so glad they fixed that because yeah, I'm not. It, it wasn't so great live. I'm gonna admit. But so um, yeah, they played the songs. That, oh, again, yeah, man, what's going on with the thing? Anyway, you good. Yeah. Uh, so they're playing songs and we're jamming. I was a little under the weather. Uh, for those. Uh, we had our own virus that spread in my house <laughs> last uh, last week. Uh, my daughter got really sick. She was puking. And then Adriana got really sick, and she threw up, bro. And when I talk about when Adriana threw up, it sounded like she filled the bathtub halfway and jumped in. That's what it, <laughs> that's what it sounded like when she threw up, bro. I'm like, whoa. I'm like, are you okay? Uh, and then I was a little sicky in the stomach, but I didn't throw up. I held strong. Uh, but So I was feeling under the weather, but when Devil Wars Prada comes on, you just ignore how you're feeling, and you just fucking vibe, right? And then uh, Outnumbered, they started the intro to Outnumbered. And it's funny because you suddenly it felt like everybody got three times bigger because this, just the amount of space that you had at that moment like it shrunk down significantly. Like I had places to stand up straight. And then the intro to Outnumbered came in and then I started to do this mm-hmm. because everybody started to everybody's push start, yeah, started to spread out a little bit. And then when the song came, bro. It was fucking nuts, and I told Adriana, like I said, once the intro came, I'm like, uh oh, <laughs> I got a bad feeling yeah. about this. And I'm like, this is not going to be good, and I'm like, this is everybody's about to go nuts, and they fucking went nuts. Um, our numbers fantastic live, man. They need to play that shit more often. I um, think they rotate what they do off zombies. Yeah, space is pretty consistent. You usually get Alien or Planet A. Yeah. Um, but yeah, zombies. I feel like it's different every tour. Absolutely. Maybe they, maybe they play Escape one time. Maybe it's Anatomy. And oh, because they played Anatomy last time I saw them. Which did I they? thought was an interesting one, and yeah. they did it with the. Or no, it was Escape because it had the gunshot. In yeah, it, and that was lined up so perfectly. <laughs> oh, anyway, uh, <laughs> but uh, so they played out number this time, and I think that's maybe the third time total I've seen them play it, and it was just fucking bananas. Um, so yeah, I I would definitely recommend trying to see that live because isn't that ten year anniversary for that coming up soon? For what Dead Throne? No, for um, zombies. Zombies was that twenty ten or was that twenty twelve? You know we've done we've talked so much about this EP on this podcast. You think we know like a back zombies back. fucking episode on the other podcast that you'd think we knew when this came out August twenty third twenty ten. Hey, ten years in review. All right, retro review. Put it down. They We're gonna have a, like a calendar because I know they did a five year. They did a five year t- anniversary for it, yeah. and that's when they were dropping. They were getting ready to drop Space because uh, they played Supernova. They debuted it on that tour. Um, so maybe we can get as uh, maybe. Well, that means the five year for fucking Space is coming out then, huh? Crazy, huh? They should do a fucking double feature, Space Zombies. That's ten songs, and then do another like eight. Yeah, just your eight staples. Yeah, maybe yeah. they should do that. But which one comes first? Zombies come first. Wait, well, I'm, I'm saying, which one are, are they going to play live first? Zombie, zombie, yeah, zombie. You get space in the middle because kind of like how a, how are you supposed to watch the rest of the show if you're dead after the first five or six? <laughs> that's songs? a good point. <laughs> that's, that's just that's a good point. Uh, but yeah, so the set was fucking fantastic. They sounded great. I um, mean, granted, it was the first stop of the tour, so very little room for like rust, right? Um, or like fatigue. They were like ready to go. Yeah, you you said the total opposite yeah, there, buddy. For, yeah, fatigue. Um, they were ready to go and they, they proved it, man. It was, it sounded good. Still no Andy. He's still at home with his kid. Um, but yeah. Do you, man? Yeah, absolutely. Do you? They're, they're not getting any younger. Absolutely. So, um, d- definitely a great show. Uh, not the best I've ever seen them. The best I, I saw them was when I'm not the most recent time I saw them at the bottom lounge, but the time prior where they just played 15 songs and just didn't stop and talk the whole time. Yeah, man. They just went straight through and just murdered you. Prada at the bottom lounge. That's yeah. What's up. Yeah, absolutely. One of my favorite shows all time was when... I saw them there and they closed with Mammoth. I was like, oh, my yeah. body is ready. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, they were really, 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 really good. How right. were the uh, Romans? So, uh, we saw We Came as Romans. Uh, we didn't stay for the whole set uh, just due to the fact that Adriana was tired and she had to go to work the next day. And um, 
So we stayed for probably like half of the set. Uh, they actually started off with this really, actually really nice, really well put together little intro, like through the videos. Because mm-hmm. um, they have like these monitors in between like every cabinet, guitar cabinet, bass cabinet, whatnot. And it's like a screen and they're talking about it. And um, they were starting to talk about it. They're like, hey, you know, you know, when we started this, when we did the album, you know, we were just looking for something to do. You know, we were kids who were bored in our mom's basement and we wanted to make this a little bit more la la la. Right. And they were just talking about it. It was real nice. And then at the end, the very end of that little presentation part, uh, they're like, well, this is, and everybody kept on saying it, this is. And then they go to Kyle from back in the day saying, this is the planet seed. And then they came out and played it. It was actually really nice. Damn. That's a tribute to the album and to, and Kyle to their friend. And yeah. Jesus. Yeah. So like, this is the planet seed. And then they came out and played it. It was good, man. Um, now, like the problem is, is that you and I did a review of this album not so long ago that it doesn't really stand up very well nowadays. It sounds great, but the, the style is very dated uh, to that early 2010, 2011 kind of a sound. Uh, but they did their best. Uh, you know, I give 100 percent credit to. Um, oh my god, uh, Dave for doing all that vocal work. Yeah, he's it, um his pipes are strong. Yeah, he has to do a lot of work, and granted, he gets a little bit of support from the guitar player and the bass player. But he's doing a lot of work on those songs. And you have to keep in mind, those songs were written for two people to do vocals, and he has to do all of them now, uh, which is why they're probably retiring a lot of that album because I think the whole album's going into the vault um, once this tour is over with or when it's once it reconvenes and commences, right? Um, that they're going to put the rest of the album in the vault. And, um, you know, they won't play those songs anymore. But about halfway through, they stopped playing those songs and went into things that we've done since, th- since then, right? Other songs from other albums and stuff like that. They were cool. It sounded good. And I was looking at it. Like I said, it was probably like 930. I'm like, ah, let's go home. Right. I had fun. They were, they put on a good show. It was no detriment to them. It was not me putting anything negative on them. I was just tired and I was, wasn't feeling well. So I'm like, you know what? We'll go home. So overall, the experience was a pretty good one. Um, like I said, even I'm not the biggest We Came as Romans fan anymore, but the show was good. Uh, and I'm super impressed with them as a live band, losing a family member, Losing a you know a vocalist, big deal. And uh, continuing on, I have to find a way to continue on, and they did a pretty good job. And like I said, uh, with all the mushy stuff, because they did have a couple presentations sprinkled in, it was nice. You know, it was nice of them, and uh, it was good. It was a good show overall, for sure. Glad to hear that. So, yeah, so definitely, because uh, uh, you know we're gonna have plenty of chances. People are gonna have plenty of chances to check this out because it's been delayed and postponed and whatnot. So if you get a chance to check out, um, you know, this tour, definitely do that because um, it was good. It was really good. Good shit, sir. Um, I also went to go see a show this week. I went to go see my favorite band for the 11th time. Uh, yeah, we're keeping track, by the way. Fair enough. We're, we're trying to hit 13 by the end of the year. Really? Yeah. You going to go to Buffalo if they're mm-hmm. even doing it anymore? Oh, yeah. We're going to Buffalo. <laughs> if, if we're still alive by then? Uh, <laughs> where to start with this show? So it was on Thursday and amidst the corona panic. Uh, so it was at the Metro, which is an 1,100-person cap venue. And uh, about, I don't know, an hour or two before the show, the governor of Illinois said, hey, no more than 1,000 people. Yeah. So now me and the guys are like, she, <laughs> we got to get there. They're going to turn away 100 motherfuckers, mm-hmm. right? And so we got there, which wasn't the plan. We weren't supposed to get there early because every time I die, Play being it. every time I die. Played at 10 o'clock, right? 10, 15, they came on. Yep. Um, we get there. Guerrilla Warfare, excellent band. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the band after them called Lurk. Local band from, uh, they're like, what's up, Chicago? We're a band called Lurk, and we're from here. And I thought that was fucking hilarious. <laughs> um, very straight rock and roll. I think they're going to go places. They do it very well. Uh, Frontman's kind of charismatic. Um, they're fun. And I had a chat with them after the show, and they seem like very good guys. Bought cool. their 7-inch. Um, and then a band called Nothing Played. Very, man, how would I explain it? It's like if Caspian and... Um, and Loathe had a kid. Very okay. like atmospheric, very vibey. Okay. More towards the heavier side. Uh, their bassist was having a fucking field day on that thing. Was he? I hope that bass was 18 the way he was fingering it. <laughs> um, and then every time I died came on. Yeah. At 10, 15. And they played Hot Damn in its entirety. And um, Like executively? They just went straight yep, through? Uh-huh. And um, so <laughs> I, so there's three of us because one of my friends is a pussy and he canceled. He's like, I'm going to catch Corona. It's like, yeah, but if you catch Corona, you cut it at every time I die. So if you die, it's perfect, right? <laughs> it's just like I wouldn't want – anyway. Um, my 11th show, like I mentioned, uh, my buddy Greg's second show. Uh, this is the first show on land that he's seen with them. 
And then my buddy Scott's <laughs> first, because he went to the boat show. Yeah, yeah. Me, right? I, was, I was confused for a second. Like, what are you talking about? And but then my buddy Scott's sense. first show. And so the idea was, my buddy Scott was like, yeah, let's get right up front, right to the barricade. There's no barricade at the Metro, by the mm-hmm. way. And I was like, mm, I don't know, man. We got up pretty close. And he's like, I'm going to stand right here. I was like, listen, the moment those guys walk on stage, you're going to have to turn around. And he's like, <laughs> why? I'm like, just watch. Yeah. And so they get up. Romeo Gogo starts, and dude, I just love the fans because it is fight on sight. The <laughs> moment Andy strums that guitar, yeah, it is mass chaos, mass panic. Just I don't know, man. It is absurdity at its finest. So we went straight through Hot Damn, and we played like ten more songs. And you know it's going to be a good set when Map Change shows up in the middle of the set, <laughs> and they don't close with Map Change. Interesting. Um, we so got they, some. Wait, how many songs do they play? I want to say like 16 or 17. Jesus Christ. They play till like 1130, 1135-ish. Yeah. And so we got we got a lot of fun ones that don't pop up all the time. We got Thirst. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got Bored Stiff, which was fun to see. And then we got, you know, like No Son of Mine, Werewolf, obviously. Oh, dude, when Werewolf came on. So sick. It got stupid. It so, got real well, stupid. Yeah, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Go ahead. I, um, <laughs> you, you know, it's weird to see when you're in the pit with your friends, you, it's weird to see how animalistic people become. Yeah. Especially with that. Um, and then we got a brand new song called Planet Shit, which the world is not ready for because I love low teens. I like it quite a lot. Oh, my God. Here you go. He, Gabe's going to overhype this. Go ahead. This Man, <laughs> this album is going to be crazy. Oh, and sure Putney's behind it. And anyway, the new single is properly fucking good. And it is like 110% balls to the wall. It is like it feels like it's off of uh, uh, Oh, Sweet Baby Jesus, the same album as Vultures and Decane with the Boys. Oh, uh, from Parts Unknown. There we go. Thank you. It feels like it's from Parts Unknown. How did Unknown. I know that? You did it. <laughs> I had I had literally had the picture in my head. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, they were a blast, and they closed with bimbos. I want to be dead with my friends. So all sick. This. Yeah. Um, what can I say, dude? They put on a great show. You've heard this 11 fucking times out of my mouth. You don't need to hear anymore. Mm-hmm. They're fun. They're great. Anyway, Friday, they were at Detroit with Sanction and CU Space Cowboy, and the show was canceled. Ouch. I, get, I think Sanction and the CU Space Cowboy played a house show at a skate park with 249 people. Pretty Because that, that was the hard cap in Detroit, 250. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was pretty tight. And then Saturday, they were supposed to be in, was it Philly or was it Pittsburgh? With Pittsburgh. Code Pittsburgh. Yeah. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute. Because we, we talked about going to that, but canceled as well. So every time I die, last stop in Chicago, I'm pleased. And if I die, I, I die you know, doing what I love. Push <laughs> people. Oh, I want to mention my favorite NPC that I saw because it was at this show. Um, non-playable character, right? Okay. I, well, like when you're I, playing a game and you're like, oh, look, okay, it, go ahead. It was, um, man, how do I even set this up? It was, um, he was a little bigger, maybe like my height, 245-ish pounds, a little heavy set, heavily tattooed, um, shirtless with a ski mask. And this man loved to crowd surf. <laughs> and it was just the most wacky fucking thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. I usually see like banana suit dude. Yeah. Or like uh, Dude with Funny Hat. Dude with Funny Hat was also there, by the way. Okay. But this dude sets a new precedent. It was like, I don't know, like one of the masked intruders got into an Every Time I Die fucking set or something. But <laughs> yeah, man, balls to the walls, bananas. Um, I got nothing else to say because I've said it 11 times. Excellent. 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 All right. So uh, we got an album review. Well, we got 320. I'm going to talk about this real quick. It's oh, just yeah, a sure, quick sure, talking sure. point. Uh, 320 Fest is like a cultural fest that's coming going to be happening. Well, we'll see if it fucking happens. Uh, but basically, it is set up by Talinda Bennington, who was Chester Bennington's wife. Uh, basically, it's like an arts and music kind of a vibe. Uh, it's also helped being helped organized by Kevin Lineman, who is Sweet. the founder of Warp Tour, the world's best organizer. Yep, that you know you're not you're not not lying about that. Uh, so they got like a little festival coming up. I think it's gonna be taking place in California, uh, three twenty because as Chester Bennington's birthday. Um, so that's why they're naming it. I thought it was kind of a cool little talking point. And I'm glad that there's some positivity coming from that. It's That's, good to see that it's just that it's arts and music and yeah. not just like a music fest. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I think that side of um, this podcast kind of goes to the wayside, you mm-hmm. know, for sure. We always talk about the musical aspects, but a lot of our favorite bands and members in that bands do other things with their non-touring time. Absolutely. No, I agree. So um, it's a wonderful little thing. And I just wanted to bring it up because I like it a lot. So. Good stuff. So, um, now let's talk about this album. A uh, tiny little band out of Pennsylvania <laughs> called Code Orange. Yeah. Uh, drop drop their sophomore album. Um, it's pretty well, good. No, it's not their sophomore album. Oh, is, is it the third? Fourth, I think. Wow, I'm way behind. Yeah. So they dropped their fourth album, their senior year album, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. um, yeah, tiny little band. They're all right. Yeah. Um, no, let's talk about this thing. So, man, <laughs> what year is it? 
It is 2020 game. But new metal is alive and well. Whoa, 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 whoa. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, you know, uh, contrary to what Finn McKenty says, new metal is alive and well, and Code Orange exemplifies all the best parts of that style of music and incorporate nasty beat down, beatdowns. Um, interesting production and recording choices because when i was listening to this i had to, i was like is my phone acting up because <laughs> they do a lot of like the stutters they yeah. do like a lot of the cassette tears yeah things of that nature and so let me tell you how i listened to this album i didn't listen to it on my way to work um which is usually my review time yeah. i was um out and about i was going to hang out with a friend and i had like a 40 minute drive and i was like perfect this album is 47 minutes long by the way it does not feel that it does long. not feel like it at all I think this is the first album we don't have a uh, complaint about the length of it. No, right? absolutely not. Um, and I threw it on and it's like 6.30 going on 7 p.m. And the sun is setting and I'm driving southbound. And, you know, there's like no cars on the road and this music's blasting. And I was like, this is the beginning of Dawn of the Dead. <laughs> there's very few cars on the road. And any moment now, I'm going to see a sprinter just sprint across Cicero <laughs> Avenue. And then it starts. And yeah. I don't have my gun with me. <laughs> and it hit me that I might die tonight. Um, I tweeted it, and I mentioned it, and I truly mean it. This album is the perfect zombie movie outbreak album. You listen to it, and you, you just watch f- footage from your favorite zombie film, and it'll work. I mm-hmm. promise you. I yeah. can see it. Um, there's a lot of love. There's a lot of 55-gallon um, drums. There's a lot of rusty old pipes and abandoned warehouses in this album. Absolutely, there is. <laughs> it, it, listen, man. Code Orange is the byproduct of early 2000s culture. Mm-hmm. You name it, Slipknot. You can hear it. little bits of like Deftones. You can hear it. Probably even like Limp Biscuit if you look hard enough, right? Mm-hmm. Every band that was big from '99 to '05 that was like the statement, the sentiment of Hot Topic, Code Orange takes all that as influence and distills it into what I can only describe as raw energy, aggression, love, and talent. Absolutely. This album is insanity, but it's like, it's like if you and I put on like, I don't know, our smoking jackets that neither of us own and we just had whiskey and we looked outside your window and there was just like a mosh pit of zombies tearing each other, cannibal zombies moshing. That's what this album feels like in all honesty. And, Ottoman Carbine is probably one of my favorite tracks off this thing. Mm-hmm. Um, re- man, it's a good experience. Mm-hmm. I'm giving this an A minus okay. in my books. Um, and we'll see where it goes. You know, my whole thing is that how often I come back to it. Mm-hmm. But at the moment, we're, we're, it's like Chariot and it's fucking Code Orange. That's all we've been listening to recently. Mm-hmm. But holy shit, this, <laughs> this is an album that blew me away and I wasn't really expecting to do a full ass review on it. Really? That's my thoughts on it. Interesting. Fire away, because this uh, is your band. Absolutely. So, Core Orange is a band that I fucking love. We've talked about this in the past. Um, you know, you're more of a knock loose guy. I'm more of a Core Orange guy. And I think we share the same kind of sentiments, but in reverse, mm-hmm. when it comes to I like knock loose, but you love knock loose. I love Core Orange, but you love Core Orange kind of a deal. Um, so, I was really looking forward to this. This is one of my more highly anticipated releases of the year. And I will say with full confidence that they did not disappoint in the in the slightest bit. It is definitely a progression moving forward. It doesn't sound like forever at all, right? There is some some very unique differences between what they did on that and what they're doing here. All right, underneath is an album that is completely like a, just a strange kind of a journey, right? Because they they mixed in whatever that's very weird. They mixed in whatever they could. You're like, you know what? This would be a very interesting part for maybe like a spoken word kind of a thing. And you get the bup, bup, bup. yeah, the like, crazy uh-oh. stutter and disturbing kind of uh, vocal delivery and stuff like that. And just kind of clips of random sounds and noises, and they mixed it in with their music beautifully. And um, it's just a wild, it's just a wild experience. They took you on this crazy trip, and there was multiple times when I was listening to it, I'm like, "Whoa, what the fuck? What the fuck was that?" Totally out of left field. Yeah, and just you're like Code Orange. Is that you? Yeah, it was very, it was a very strange thing. Um, and I, I, I agree with you, man. I think. Uh, if, if the Doom soundtrack wasn't so well done already, I think you could just insert this into the new yeah. Doom game. How much? How much for this album? <laughs> I think you just could insert it into the new Doom game and you would totally fit in. Honestly, if it's... Well, no, it is too late because Doom comes out Friday. Mm-hmm. Have it as the title screen. Right. Like a song. That's It's so sick. And it's just like... And like I said, like, man, 
the fucking opening track. Well, I mean, I know it has like the little ambient thing at the opening, but the op- than before. Yeah, but swallowing the, the rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah, that's how fucking metal is that. First off, um, we, we talked about that song, but it has like that kind of that piano. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, it's just so fucking crazy. And uh, I was listening to it le- yet again yesterday because I listened to it probably like six times already. Because I just you're in love. I just fucking love the whole thing. I love everything about it. I love the presentation. I love how it looks. And uh, this is craziness. And but there's songs in there that don't aren't that on paper shouldn't work with this style and Correct. this album and Code Orange, but they do. Yeah, and like because those songs that are more Reba centric, where she's singing a lot of it, you wouldn't think it would work. But it fucking totally works, <laughs> and it works in this weird kind of beautiful way, uh, where her f- her singing, her singing vocals kind of bring this different kind of softness to it. But at the same time, she can the go from instrumentals. Yeah, she can go from singing like really pretty to like kind of shouting and screaming at you because she's a really good screamer too. And uh, it's just fucking fantastic, man. I it, I can't I cannot give you words that describe how enthusiastic I am about this. Uh, about this album and right now i got two albums fighting at the top we reviewed the last album on the last episode uh right oh, now which it's, one is that one? it's between four years strong right yep. now mm-hmm. and it's between code orange and what if, if will putney produced the code orange album no, I didn't, no he didn't he didn't no he didn't like about the world would implode <laughs> yeah um they're just weird they're just a weird group yeah and man it's it, it's they have no rules they apply what they want they do what they want i'll tell you this i was really hungry after i listened to that album because the sheer amount of calories you burn from the panic it distills into your <laughs> fucking soul is insanity. This album is like, I don't know, it's a dark and stormy night mm-hmm. and you're sleeping and the thunder wakes you up and you think you see your dad in like the like your doorway and you say dad, but it's not your dad. <laughs> Good job, Code Orange. Yeah, I, man. I usually do like food comparisons, but can't even do it. huh? Can't even do it. Like, what would you call this thing? A I can't. I can't. I can't. No. It, it's it's like fucking swallowing the fucking uh, rabbit hole. <laughs> no, no, no. It's like you know. Yeah, well. It's like <laughs> it's like if you swallowed a kiwi without peeling it, you just feel all the. Lo- I, no, that's that's, that's a terrible. I was actually gonna do a, a step different. It's like swallowing the fucking waffle maker. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what it's that's what it's. You fucking, shitting the court out first or the press out first? <laughs> that's, that's that's what I'm saying. It's just so. It's a very unique thing, man. There's nobody who's doing it quite like them right now. And uh, swallowing an old rusty waffle maker <laughs> hole. Uh, but <laughs> that should have been the name of the album. Uh, but I love it, man. I just, like I said, I can't, I can't even describe to you how much I love it. Cause it's just so unique. There's nobody, like I said, there's nobody doing this right now. Nobody. On what other podcast is swallowing an old rusty waffle maker a compliment? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Hey, I mean, I love them, dude. And I think they're only emerging. They're only going to get better from here. And that's like really exciting. The, the potential. Mm-hmm. Is unreal. Mm-hmm. Is unreal, especially when you look at the discography. Mm-hmm. It's noticeable progression. Their yeah. mild times are getting stronger every album release. Absolutely, and like I really, I loved Forever, uh, but I, I, this is way better than Forever in my well, opinion. I didn't, I didn't love Forever. Yeah. I thought it was notable, and I thought we should be paying attention to this band. But mm-hmm. this, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good stuff, man. Underneath, uh, for right now, for me, I'm gonna give it the same grade as Four Year Strong. I could definitely see this moving up in, in the ranking. It's an A. It's a solid A right now. I could see it very easily shifting into the plus category. Give me a couple more listens. I'm sure I'll probably be talking about it again. Well, yeah, we'll review December because something else might come out that catches your eye. Yeah, for sure. It's a uh, smaller band out of Manuka, Illinois that is called, I don't know, what's a good, the, the um, shit, we'll call him Schechter. <laughs> <laughs> Not like the brand, but it's okay. a small S and then it's Hector. S- Hector. <laughs> okay, so- Okay, moving along, but uh, yeah, uh, but with that, um, you know, they were gonna have their album release uh, show in Pittsburgh, their hometown. Unfortunately, uh, because of the world's falling apart, uh, because of this album, by the way, is what cost absolutely, yeah, 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 absolutely. That's why everybody got canceled. Uh, but uh, so they they played a show. They still played the show, but no, completely empty venue. But they uploaded it and put it on Twitch, or they did it live on Twitch, um, which is kind of a unique thing. I haven't really heard anybody doing anything quite like that. Uh, and well, they we got the uh, the marshmallow thing in Fortnite, but that's a totally different ballpark. True, absolutely. but that was totally voluntary. Whereas this was a product of the situation of the world, I guess at yeah, this point, right? Absolutely. So um, they played a show, uh, basically, because I think they were going to get billed for it anyways. So they said, "Fuck it, we'll play it and maybe do something unique, maybe recoup some of the income," which I hope they did. Um, 
because it was a wonderful little show. Um, they mixed in all their new stuff and a little bit of the old stuff. Uh, it's just fucking brutal. Uh, so if you haven't seen that, it's on the, their Twitch channel. Kind of a unique experience. I haven't quite experienced a show like that. And it's funny because he's like, set it off. Like, there's there's, there's nobody in there, bro. Like, who's supposed to set it off? Set off what? What are we talking about? Uh, but I don't know. It's it, weird. Yeah. I want to see you fucking go crazy. Everybody in their armchairs. <laughs> yeah, ba- basically. And uh, there was a moment like there was like a lull in the set. Maybe they were like sw- switching out guitars or whatever. And he looked directly into the camera. He's like, we want to thank you guys for being with us tonight. It's kind of a strange turn of events. The world's going, going to hell in a handbasket. But we appreciate you guys coming out and, you know, taking time out of your day to listen to us jam, basically. Uh, and you would think with that, with them, nobody like, actually paying to be there, that they would take the performance lightly and they wouldn't go 100% balls to the wall. But no, nah, man. They did. They still went nuts. And uh, oh, Was it just them? Any of the openers? Or? Nope, just them. Yeah, just them. Uh, and it was a kind of unique experience. I haven't seen nothing like that. And it was kind of like they got to present it kind of how they wanted to, almost like in a music video kind of a style. I heard the acoustics were phenomenal because there's no mm-hmm. meat to bounce the mm-hmm. sound off of, right? Yeah, it, it sounded very good. Um, so I would definitely check that out. It's on the Twitch channel. And show those guys some love. I'm gonna. Tr- I'm trying to buy, buy a, t- a T-shirt by the end of the week. Um, because I don't have any code orange stuff and I need some in my life. Like that's the worst, you know, when you fall in love with a band and you realize you don't have any merch of theirs. Yeah. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to divvy out some money for them to hopefully. make sure you count that for the roundup next week. If you yeah. buy it. Absolutely. One uh, on the way. Yeah. And hopefully keep their heads under, uh, over water at this point, because I feel, I feel so bad for these bands and stuff. And, uh, well, you know, granted code orange, every time I die, bigger bands, strong followings, mm-hmm. but what about, I don't know, like Sanction, Mm -hmm. See You Space Cowboy. Mm -hmm. What about bands that we don't even know about who quit their day jobs to tour and then boom, suddenly the world's ending for a six month stretch. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a strange thing, but um, definitely check it out. Core Orange, man. So good. So sick. I was fucking turned into Beetlejuice right there. That was a weird thing. Um, (laughs) They say if you (laughs) say Code Orange in the mirror three times. Yeah. Right. You're going to go down the rabbit hole. Hole. (laughs) Whole, <laughs> whole. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah man so with that being said i believe that's 152 yeah that was 152 out of the second city kids podcast all right so thank you guys for joining us here for uh 152, 152. hopefully we'll see you soon at some point for episode 153 wash your hand oh, 153 wash your hands yeah wash your asses absolutely uh we had a good time and yeah man just take care of yourselves and like gabe said proper hygiene yeah, be I. <clears throat> that was episode 152. We'll see you next week for episode 153. And until then, deuces. Thank you guys for joining us this week on the Second City Kids podcast. You can like us on iTunes, Google, anywhere else podcasts are found. Any comments, questions, or concerns, you can email us at secondcitykids at gmail.com. Until next week, folks, deuces. Deuces.